before you dislike this video, before you click off and you're like, holy shit, what the fuck is he gonna talk about? The dark side about PUA and do like a rant, feminist rant against POAs. That's not what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so make sure that you watch until the end so you get a clearer picture of really uh, as a rant against POA about all the limitations, all the paradigm log that you might experience in POA and all that. So let's get into it right the fuck now. I think we all have to go in there and just try this to like. First of all, let me tell you a bit about my journey in PUA and uh, you know, because really I'm talking, I'm doing a rant against the PUA community, not from an outsider's perspective, but really from an insider's perspective, because I was in this community for years. Actually, I was in the community for a while. Some of us, we get in personal development because of different reasons, because of different things that happened to us or whatever. Me, I got into it uh, because I was struggling in that area. So, you know, about a few years ago, I stumbled upon PUA that, you know, the first thing I looked at on the internet was like how to find a girl or like how to be more confident, that type of thing when I was younger. And I just stumbled upon PUA. And like, this really was the beginning of my journey into learning more about how to be successful with women, more confident with women, because really I had no success in that area. I was really had, I had like a, a lot of troubles. And by the way, if you hear some noise in the background, it's just my roommate. So you don't, don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, that's how I began. And uh, it was, it was, it wasn't, a diff it wasn't a easy journey at first. It was really uh, difficult because I had to go through, you know, all of my, all of my fears, all my traumas as to like, uh, you know, as all of us go through. <laughs> uh, some of the scariest things in my life I had to overcome, you know, like crippling social anxiety when it comes to social interactions, you know, with women and all that, and with people in general. And, you know, I was never diagnosed with social anxiety or and so forth. I don't, you know, I think we all have some sort of shyness, you know, depending on the social situation. But me, it was like really pronounced, really, really pronounced. I was even called a shy kid uh, at my school and so forth because of that, the discreet kid. So that, that's what I was struggling with. After that, you know, like this journey took me a few years, you know, to become good at. I, I would never say I mastered that journey, but uh, there were ups and downs, things that I learned and things that honestly in the community that I, I wish like that were not there. And certain things that, you know, that are really, that make sense in that paradigm, in that worldview, but makes no sense once you need to evolve past that worldview. I'm gonna explain to you why in a minute, why that is. So. First thing is, um, why is uh, why is why is PUA so limiting? What's what's bad about it? First, before I tell you what's bad, I'm gonna tell you all the good about it. Okay, so good thing about PUA is that it teaches you to confront your fears, it teaches you that uh, to take action. You know, to um, you know, stop caring about what other people think, about um, really getting out of your comfort zone. And if you struggle with anxiety, social anxiety, confidence and all that, those are really amazing things. And there is a personal development aspect to it that's also very good. Uh, for example, you learn how to rewire your belief, you learn how to um, think more clearly and all that, uh, to be in the moment when you're interacting with others instead of overthinking and all that. And that's what you learn to do. That's something very good. You know, yes, you learn like more like the practical things as to how to get with a girl, how to sleep with a girl, how to get with multiple girls, maybe if that's the your type of thing you're into. So you learn those things as well. And those things can be useful, can be very useful uh, if you struggle in that area. You know, of course, if you come from a place of scarcity, having no girls, this is something that is very good uh, in a short term, right? So it's something to learn. Now let's look a bit at the bad or at the limitations of the POA community. There's what the POA community is on paper and what it actually is, practically speaking and those can be very different. Okay, so we'll, I'll make the distinctions and I'll also add in some personal experiences that I had, some of the like, those like fucked up things that I saw in the community or heard about in the community or about other girls that, you know, that certain PUAs met and all that, and like all that crazy shit, I'll tell you all about it in that video. First of all, you know, you have to know that in every single community in the world, there will be some aspect of toxicity to it, uh, you know, there will be some, there will be always be the good and the bad. So for example, you go in the Navy SEALs or in the army, there will always be those like one or two messed up guys that just, you know, want to kill people, you know, for their own, because they're saddest or whatever. And there's always like those, those like exceptions. There's always those like exceptions in the community. So something to be, um, something to be aware of. 
and PoA is no different. But now let's look at all the limitations of it. One thing with the PoA community is that it is, if you break it down in terms of uh, personal development stages, it's like really the first stage. I'd say it's the beginning stage. When you're beginning in personal development, maybe you lack confidence, and there's certain things that you want, usually when you start in personal development, are like materialistic goals, materialistic objectives, something that you want to achieve, you know, materialistically, whether it be in a, you know, you want to get a relationship with a girl, or you want to get, you want to have sex with women, because you're having no women in your life. Just like a materialistic goal, that's the starting point, but in my opinion, it should never be the end point. Because anything materialistic really is, um, in my opinion, is something that will make you, maybe give you short-term happiness, short-term pleasure, but it'll never be, but it'll never be that long-term fulfillment. If you look at the long-term horizon, um, you know, look, really, if you look five, 10, 20 years ahead, you just want to be that guy who just had sex with women? Is that who you want to be? Is that like a worthwhile goal, you think? Maybe, maybe you can't see past that. Maybe that's all you want to do for your life. And you know, maybe in that lifetime, you know, that's all you're gonna do. Maybe that's, maybe that's it. Maybe your life is destined just to fuck a lot of girls just in this lifetime. And if that's you, then that's you, right? But I want to suggest that this is a limiting paradigm because um, really it's materialistic. There's nothing in the PUA community really that appeals to higher values of higher consciousness of, uh, you know, having a contribution to the world. Like, how does she feel? How can you make her, how you can make her day better? How can you leave her better than you left off? Yes, in theory, certain PUAs will talk about that. Certain coaches will even talk about that. Yeah, may leave her better than you left her, leave her better than when you, you know, when you met her, you know, leave her better off. But in practice, I'd say it's almost never the case. It's very rarely the case. If you look in practice, really guys, we approach, you know, the POAs, we approach women really because we want to uh, have this boost of confidence, this boost of validation. We want to get on a date with this girl. And, you know, that's why we approach a lot of women, you know, and all that. And, uh, you know, in practice, it's different. We don't really, th we, us POAs, like us, P the POAs are in the community, we don't go and approach because we want to make her day better. Like, let's, let's face it. You want to get laid, right? You want to get laid, you want to get sex, you want to have results. And unfortunately, that can be something that, that can lock you, lock you in a box of selfishness and uh, where you cannot see past your nose. So that's one problem. Another problem is that it's ego driven. Yeah. Uh, the PUA community is extremely ego driven. If you look at, uh, you know, PUA groups, you know, on Facebook or whatever, even PUA forums, they're just, it's like a lot of it is, uh, yeah, sometimes they give good advice, but a lot of it is like they're posting pictures of the girls they've met, uh, kind of objectifying the women that they've been with. Uh, being like, hey, so I met all of these girls, look at those pictures, look at how hot they are, eight out of 10, like 10 out of 10, like hot Russian blonde girl, whatever. And you read the post, right? And it's like, uh, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong about being proud of your achievements, but it seems like sometimes people post like those, those like, they call it fear reports, right? Where you go out and like, you kind of write down about what happened and uh, you come back. And it's like, you read the whole post and it's like, it's more of them uh, bragging and all that than anything else. And then maybe trying to sell a product or something like that. But it's not like, some, a lot of these posts, there's not real value in them. Like, it seems like it's a very selfish, very self, like ego-driven community, ego-driven kind of practice. And that can become a huge problem, uh, especially if you wanna move up in stages of personal development. So that is one limiting mindset. And you know what, you know what, like even certain PUAs, you know, I'm not going to say like, yeah, let's, let's just say their names, fuck it, RSD, okay? Let's say RSD, they talk about how PUA, they can turn you into like, sort of like a higher consciousness type of thing. And like, you know, they talk about like, oh yeah, like if you're present to the moment, you rage it that higher consciousness, you get more women and all that. It's like, okay, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, you know, you get into that thing and uh, of like, Certain POAs, because of that, you know, that stigma of like selfishness and ego drivenness, they kind of like superimpose this uh, spiritual, like 
pursued on top of it like it's for higher consciousness and that you become a more loving loving person you know that's what they say but is that really how it is is that really how it is in practice you know often it feels like some of these companies they like kind of superimpose that layer of spirituality just to make it sound like sound like it is higher virtue it's make it sound like they're ego-driven practices and they're like materialistic pursuits hedonistic pleasures that they're they indulge in really are you know spiritually justified now are they spiritually justified and all that i don't know i mean <laughs> there's no point you know there's no like ultimate purpose to life you know we create our own purpose you know so i mean you know maybe maybe yes maybe no but you really could put like a spiritual layer on top of everything and that's what a lot of cults do by the way <laughs> uh, now i'm getting we're getting an interesting territory you know not saying that poa is a cult but i mean kind of kind of <laughs> in a way i'll explain to you why in a second but so a lot of cults what they do is that they do certain practices okay why whatever stupid like sometimes they're 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 awesome sometimes they're fucking stupid like like i'm i don't even i'm not even gonna say things but like they do stupid shit, okay and they add a spiritual layer like kind of like a spiritual um uh sprinkle on top of it just to make it sound like it makes sense make it sound like it's the right thing to do like it's a spiritual thing to do the morally justified thing to do <laughs> i mean I mean, it's kind of fucked up. But like some guys will just, they'll learn meditation because they think that by meditation, they'll become better at, you know, having sex with women and approaching women, which, I mean, it kind of helps. Of course it helps to be more present, but it's, it's not kind of a twisted uh, reason to do meditation, just so you can become better at like picking up girls. I mean, you shouldn't meditate just to meditate. To become more present, in my opinion, there should be no goal to meditation other than meditation itself. But of course, if you had a lower paradigm of consciousness, then that would not make any sense to you. Why would you want to meditate just to meditate? You know, I mean, that's pretty much what I do. If I sit down for 20 minutes to meditate, that's all I do. I don't fucking think of anything else. But uh, <laughs> I'll, you, but you quickly see that in PUA and pickup, like a, not a lot of guys go out with the intention just of, um, with the intention just of, uh, you know, having fun and like, uh, uh, being into the process it's like yes they'll try to be process oriented they'll try to like be having fun but at the end of the day they're not getting the results that they want they're not fucking happy they're not fucking happy and you know you can lie to yourself that oh no i, I love the process i love the joy of it but do you really i mean some of us do uh <laughs> me now that i have a girlfriend you know i still go out with my friends and i help them like to approach women and you know i still yeah I find fun in that, of course, like, you know, helping them like approach women and all that. I find it fun, but um, I mean, I mean, if you were like, if you're in scarcity and all that, like, do you find it fun? Probably not. Now, another thing that's uh, problematic with the PUA community is how toxic it is. Now, toxicity can go in uh, various levels, various ways, you know, there are good things and bad things about the PUA community. Um, <laughs> now let's look into you know certain examples so for example wingmanship wingmanship that we call you know finding a wing to go out with and uh, sometimes you know if you want to find a wing quote unquote you'd post on a facebook group you know find a wing and uh, really the the reason why you're posting is really it's not because you want to make more friends it's because you don't want to get laid and you need someone to help you get laid and that person also wants to get laid so you know they reach out to you but really it's kind of like a it's it's probably in the community like yeah some guys you know like are good intention there's and all that but uh like there's uh there's so many there were so many instances i've heard and seen myself of wingmen other puas stealing girls from another pua and all that since pua is so materialistic and and you know it's it is materialistic let's let's not let's face it and because everyone in this is in so much pain and scarcity like isn't that the perfect breeding ground for toxicity? Think about it. Everyone is scarce. Everyone has no women. And, uh, you know, because let, let's face it, most guys in the community have no results. Let's face it. 90% of guys in the community have no results, okay? Everyone's in scarcity, 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 okay? And everyone is in pain. Everyone wants more. Everyone wants a materialistic goal, right? Everyone is ego-driven. Isn't that the perfect recipe for disaster? So, 
you see sometimes maybe you see wings where like um, you know they steal each other's girls for example they say like they want to be wingmen and they like they go out together and then like just one guy will just start like overpowering the other guy and like just steal all the show and like take the girl away and all that and uh, sometimes it's like I've have, have that happen to me it's like I'm talking to a certain girl and then just my my long-term friend you know that I thought was my friend uh, he just you know steals my girl away and then like justifies it that you know it wasn't his fault it was my fault for xyz uh, it happens all the time happens to so many of my poa friends and if you're in the poa community like hasn't this happened to you right ask some of your friends ask like some of your poa friends i'm sure it's happened to some of them or it happened to you and it, this doesn't get addressed kind of like this uh kind of like take you know i want to take all like give nothing back type of mentality that can be problematic right so um not only that but that you know as i said like this uh breeding ground for toxicity also like because everyone is so scarce like there's such emotions such as envy jealousy uh anger uh you know uh, all that and sort of this those emotions like often you see that uh because those guys are so scarce they'll project that toxicity into onto the girls they're talking to or even their friends or like even like um this sort of uh it's it's hard to say but like unless you're really good friends with your wings okay those wings yes you can turn them into real friends but if it's really just random dudes in the community if you get success they're not gonna they're not gonna su support you for it like they're gonna be envious they're gonna be jealous this this is what i've seen personally this is what i've seen it's like it's sort of like this this whole like echo chamber it's like we trying to be all positive and like pretend like we're doing this to help each other out and whatever when we go out but really in the end we're all in it for ourselves we're all in it for ourselves and for our own results for our own personal gratification that's the truth and can you realize that and really the poa poa community it's like um it's one another problem with the poa community is that it it's really all about breath over depth it's really all about you know uh, how many women can I get? How many women can I like approach? How many women can I get on dates with? And it's like sort of like this numbers game and you know, like counting the girls you've approached and all the girls you've had sex with and keeping a lay count, they call it and all that. And it's, it's sort of like uh, this materialist, you know, materializing all this dating process where actually, you know, it's a human talking to another human being. That's really what it is. And uh, you have to learn that. You have to be okay with that. Because there can be certain limitations uh, to just breath over depth. Um, the, the thing is with breath over depth is that um, if you notice in the POA community, they tell you like, I'm gonna quote from RSD, but they say like, um, you know, what should you do when you get one ideas for a girl? You know, I'm gonna quote from RSD Tyler. He said that in the video, I think. Uh, it was an old video, okay? So, I mean, <laughs> it was a really old video. So, I mean, I'm maybe he's changed, but like what he said about like five years ago, he said something like, what should you do when you get one idea for a girl? One idea being you, you, you obsess over a girl. You start really loving a girl. He says, go fuck 10 other. What does that tell you about the, you know, like, <laughs> what does that tell you about developing love relationships? What does that tell you about, um, you know, becoming, uh, what does that tell you about developing secure attachment? You know, isn't that like what all psychology boils down to, right? Like developing secure attachment to your, you know, lovers and, you know, and all that. And, uh, you know, to your parents. And that's like the number one dysfunction, one of the main dysfunctions as to why there's psychological problems, why people seek out counseling and all that. And because they cannot develop secure attachment. Now, what is that? Like you have like strong emotions for a girl and you, and the advice that RZ Tyler says is go fuck 10 other. What else, what else is that but avoidance, right? What is that? What else is that but to develop an avoidant uh, attachment style? There's different attachment styles if you look uh, in, the, in the psychology literature, okay? But really, that's what it is, in my opinion. It's like you're not able to, see, to create a secure attachment with a woman, so you justify that, you know what, there's no such thing, uh, uh, you know, uh, hypergamy all the way, you know, uh, 
the survival of the fittest and you just like kind of this perpetual player loop you say it's like just trying to fuck as many girls as you can as many girls as you want and all that and uh i mean that can become a vicious cycle because you never kind of find this you never find this fulfillment and i mean Maybe it fulfills you. Maybe you'll be a player for the rest of your life. But if some of those guys were to really dig down deep, I think, yes, yeah, some of the, some of those guys, it's like, yeah, that's what they want to do, okay? But I, like, if you were to really dig deep, a lot of those guys are depressed. A lot of those guys, they, they don't have their shit together. Their life is in crumbles. And uh, I've met certain guys that are really, really good with women. And literally, they have no life. That's all they do. It's like they go on dates every day uh, or like whatever. They have sex with new girls all the time and they have no no source of income. They're poor. They don't have any purpose and they just kind of like lose themselves and like fucking a bunch of girls. And you know, they call it the advanced guys depression, actually. That's a term for that is that you certainly reach a certain point in game in PUA in your life that um, you realize that getting women, getting success no longer fulfills you. That is what we call the advanced guy's depression. I think it can happen anywhere on the journey. It could even be at intermediate, for example, or after you get, you know, a few successes, you realize that women will not make you happy, right? And if I were to be honest with you, okay, if I were to be honest with you with most coaches and most POAs in general is that they're horrible at maintaining relationships. They're not good at maintaining relationships. They don't, never learn about, uh, you know, relationships. And a lot of POA coaches, just look at, you know, look at, just look at the <laughs> people in the media, I guess, uh, for example, uh, what's his name again? Neil Strauss, okay, the bald guy who wrote the game. He like, in every book is like, oh yeah, so I found my relationship. You know, he wrote the game, I found my relationship. And like, he realized, oh, it's about love. I, I don't remember the book exactly, but like he said something like that, you know? And then he gets in that relationship and then like breaks up, divorce, whatever, like shortly after. His new book called uh, The Harsh Truth about the con uncomfortable truth about relationships, whatever. He gets in a relationship, gets married, and I think gets divorced after. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> the king of seduction cannot hold a relationship for his life. Can't fucking do it. So what does that say? My theory is that because POAs, you know, they attract a woman a certain way. They attract a certain woman, they do certain tricks or whatever, they say certain things, they do certain whatever things, and then they think that uh, that's what a relationship is. I need to keep, still need to keep gaming her and all that and do all this like push pull and all that and like whatever, like all those stupid shit and they play like hard to get and whatever. And it's like, it's really juvenile. It's really immature. You're in a relationship with someone. It's like this, uh, there should be this, this kind of comfortable uh, assumption that you will be together no matter what, okay? But yeah, no matter what, uh, with certain boundaries. But there should be this implicit assumption that, you know, there you are. You're in a relationship. Uh, you don't need to do all this crazy PUA tactics on her anymore, uh, whatever it is. And um, I mean, you, you gotta like chill the fuck out. Chill the fuck out and be a human being with your girl. Uh, that, I think that's what is lacking. And um, you know, in PUA and stuff like that, if you attracted your girl, you know, the girl that you're now in a relationship with, you know, if you got in a relationship with this girl, it's like if you attracted her through like manipulation or like weird things like, like stirring drama and like, uh, you know, what else? Stirring drama, uh, being manipulative, um, for example, you know, doing push pull and like, uh, you know, dismissing her and like saying, you know, there's this theory called the nag, which is like, you say something dismissive to her and it makes her, ch makes her chase you. Girls with low self-esteem that don't believe in themselves, they respond to a guy who will, who will, uh, who will say negative things to her. So if you say like certain negative things like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not sure about that shirt and that, you know, and that those like, <laughs> and those shoes, like, I don't know if that, that fits you. And a girl who's like <laughs> low self-esteem and I was like, what, what do you mean? Oh, what do you mean? They don't fit me, oh, what do you do now? And like, you know, like get all in your face about it. But if you say that to a high self, self-esteem girl, you know, whatever type of neg you say, she's gonna be like, what do you mean? That this is like my fucking outfit, like this, 
I love, this is how I dress, it's my style. If you don't like my style, get, go, get, go fuck yourself, you know? Why, can he just be real and like, just like talk to me like a human being? Why does he have to say that like, those weird shit? That's what she'd think. So a lot of those tactics she learn only work on <laughs> those weird tactics, like manipulative tactics, learn on so low self-esteem girls. And yes, if you just wanna have sex with a bunch of girls, use all those tactics if you want. I'm sure that will help, that will work greatly. I'm not saying the neg doesn't work, it does work, okay? All those techniques and all that, push pulled, it all works. Uh, just be careful how you use them, okay? Um, you, wanna, you wanna really attract women from a f foundation of authenticity, a foundation of, you know, high self-esteem and all that. You don't want to start from a shaky foundation and use all that, those weird manipulative tactics and drama to attract that women because really that's how your relationship will turn out. Drama and all that, then you'll just crumble to pieces. Just look at Julian Blanc. And uh, now, of course, he's re really much evolved now because, you know, he's married and all that. And uh, kudos to him, you know. But before that, he used, you know, a lot of drama. Uh, you know, he'd, he'd like move in with the girl, uh, his girlfriend at the time, she was a doctor and all that. And she, he just moved in with her because I think he had no money. And what he did is like, he moved in with her and then he went to travel the, the world to like fuck other women, right? Open relationship, whatever. And like, and he thought that she was gonna be okay with that. And he's left, he left for like six months or whatever. I don't know how long he left. I mean, what, this is fucking insanity. This is fucking insanity. So. And another thing that's wrong with the Peewee community, if you were to be really fucking honest, okay? Here's the fucking truth. Peewees are misogynistic. Yep, Peewees are misogynistic. And now what do I mean by misogynistic? I don't mean, you know, there's two parts of misogyny. It's like uh, hatred or and or mistrust of women. And in my opinion, the Peewee community, it's more about mistrust of women more than hatred because I mean, why would you want to get so many girls if you love them, if you, you know, if you spend your whole time trying to seduce women? Of course, POAs, they love women. Of course, POAs, they, you know, they, they, they love women. They like women and all that. Um, but what they like more than, than women is their own validation. It's to be, it's to have this feeling of worthiness, this feeling of love, this feeling of, you know, being worthy and like, like attractive. That's what they crave more than women, if you were to be honest, really, really, really honest. UP ways about all that. But really the number one thing uh, is that they mistrust women, right? They don't kind of like have this, this belief that women will stay with them or they don't have this belief that they're enough and they, they mistrust that maybe she's gonna cheat on them. And if you're gonna be honest, guys, cause you know, P ways you come from a kind of lower confidence paradigm. You have lower confidence, lower self-esteem. So. If you were to get in a relationship, because you've frequented all those women and all that, probably in your mind you'd be thinking like, well, listen, you'd be afraid that she maybe cheat on you and all that, or that she'd leave you um, because you know, you've used all those tricks and tactics to attract her. And it happens so often. It's sort of like self-sabotage in the POA community once you get in a relationship. You can't really trust a woman. Uh, you know, even like <laughs> certain guys, they're like, they're just like, they set dates with women and, uh, you know, from cold approach, whatever. And they just, yeah, like assume she's going to flake, you know? Sometimes what they do is like, they have like three dates lined up in one day. They, they sch schedule all three dates. And if once, like, they, they expect the best one of the three to say yes, and then just cancel on the other two, it's like, this is fucking madness. <laughs> this is fucking madness. Like, this is, um, like, they don't trust that they don't fucking trust women. They don't trust that the woman they set the date with is gonna show up. It's like this intrinsic sort of uh, mistrust. Yeah, some POAs will say, ah, oh, well, you know what? It's just like, you know, it's a numbers game, man. That's how you do it. Like, this is what POA is. I mean, kind of, but it does, it, I mean. And another bad thing about the POA community is that it keeps you stuck. Yep. It really keeps you stuck in a way. Once you enter the POA community, it's really, really hard to leave it if you really you are, you know, kind of, kind of like really deep into it, you know, really, really deep into the POA community and all that. Um, because 
because of all the benefits, all the things you get from it, and uh, because you know the materialistic validation and all that, it's really seductive. It's like uh, it's like cocaine. It's like uh, uh, you know playing ca casino and all that, and it's really addictive. You know, once you get and you start getting those like pushes of validation and all that, it's really hard to get out of. Like to be honest, and uh, me getting out of you know stopping to do the POA stuff to get into a relationship, a monogamous relationship, it was like a part of me was like. Well, what if I don't get to play that casino again? What if I don't play like, don't get to like have that rush of dopamine every day and all that? What the fuck will happen? I'm gonna become depressed. Da, 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 da. And I had a phase. I was like, well, maybe I did the wrong choice. Maybe I should have continued PUA. And it's like, um, it's like this vicious cycle. It's like you can't. Um, it's like <laughs> playing the fucking lottery over and over again, and uh, it's, it becomes madness. It becomes madness of like you know. Oh, I could get in a relationship now. That's for fucking chodes and losers. I want to like be that player, like alpha dude who bangs a lot of girls. That's pretty juvenile and immature in my opinion. And uh, that becomes a problem. That becomes a problem also uh, when you learn about the pickup stuff, you know, the red pill stuff, you know, like hypergamy, you know, and mect. I mean, there's certain aspects of MGTOW that overlap with PUA. Let's not lie here. So, you know, we talk about hypergamy, about how girls, you know, they always want an alpha dude and all that. You know, all those like mindsets of like how like, you know, a woman will leave you uh, uh, like at the blink of an eye if a hot, more high value man presents itself. All of that, okay. I mean, it is, it really follows you. You know, once you've read about it, once you've seen it, all that POA stuff, it like it makes you jaded. And uh, I mean, yes, it could be good or bad in a sense because you know you've seen the truth. You fucking swallow the truth, and a lot of red pill stuff is true, um, you know. And fortunately, because it is true, <laughs> it can also leave certain scars and certain like kind of like you you leave jaded from that community. And uh, it still it can impact your everyday interactions, your everyday you know relationships with women, and uh, because you've seen so much fucked up shit, um, I mean just getting in a relationship now it's like fuck man, uh, can I even trust women? And it, it's crazy the, the shit you see once you embark on that journey. So it keeps you stuck because even like for example you in that pure community for a long time which was my case and you know when you get into something really intensely a lot of us in the community like we got so like narrow-minded that's like that's all we want to think of that's all our friends are puas uh, all we read is pua and all that and it becomes like this echo chamber of like this sort of paradigm view and it's like we're rebels we don't listen to society we don't care about what other people think this we do our thing and you know we're we're together in this and <laughs> of course if you like get in a relationship or for example you decide to quit and all your friends are PUAs it's like it'll just try to reel you back in and that's kind of what's it's been happening with me because I guess you know most of my friends are PUAs you know my best friends are pretty much PUAs still in the community right now and um, <laughs> it's like this it's like this pressure to pull you back in it's very interesting how it works one thing I want to say is like, you know, when you want to move from one stage of consciousness to the other, uh, there will always be sort of ego backlash where um, people in your current stage will try to pull you back. Okay. I mean, people in on the previous stage, so for example, your stage orange spiral dynamics, the materialistic stage, and then move to stage green, which is more like all inclusive, collective purpose, passion, whatever. Uh, you move to that stage, you know, that is, that, that's a bit more like including of the other and all your friends in the below stage will try to pull you back down or not, not consciously, but unconsciously. And um, that might happen. And even some people will see PUA, like you get a relationship. It's like, they'll see it as a regression, kind of like you're not progressing, like you're regressing from like that alpha dude to like that beta dude, like provider dude, whatever it is every interaction that you have with a woman it's hard to just be human now like you all have like this poa theory in your head like oh i can say this i can say that i can do this do that and it becomes kind of like this mechanical it, it turns interactions like in things that are me mechanical it's not even like human to human anymore and it, that can follow you i've had certain female friends i was friends with and once i got into the poa community i lost touch with them or just those female friends started to resent me and all that because since i learned poa I, I thought oh well i can be that poa now and I, like you know i got this so like this front that i was putting on and all that 
and uh, it's just kind of like build resentment in the friendship and like those female friends i no longer can talk to no longer want to talk to me and it's just really fucking weird anytime i like bump into them it's really fucking weird because of all because that pua baggage now uh <laughs> It can make it more difficult, uh, you know. In a sense, uh, you can't you can't even form friendships with friend with with girls anymore. That's what happened to me when I reached the peer, I was in the period community. I, I didn't know even how to make female friends because I I only saw girls in a sexual way. I couldn't see women in a human way. I couldn't see them for who they were. So now that we talk about all the bad about period community, like toxic shit, whatever, what should you do now? What do I suggest? What I suggest is that if you're in the POA community or you're thinking of joining the POA community, starting to do POA and all that, is like, keep doing your thing. I mean, nothing wrong with it. And in my opinion, you know, you gotta get it out of your system. If you're in the POA community, yeah, just be careful of the pitfalls and the downfalls, downfalls of it, okay? Just be really aware of those things. But really, ultimately, it's totally fine if you're in it right now, get it out of your system, you know, get all the abundance and the, the sex and all the, validation that you want get it out of your system so that you know you don't you don't marry the first woman that you meet you know that's that also would be a mistake and also another mistake would be just this forever p way who just only does that with his life has no purpose no finances nothing i think that would also be a mistake but you know of course who am i to say that you you live your fucking life but my my suggestion to you is that be in the POA community. Once you've gotten everything that you wanted, everything that you needed from that community, then you wanna move on to the next step. Next step, which is reach a higher level of consciousness. Go work on different aspects of your life beyond just women. It's like this, like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. At the bottom, you have physiological needs, safety needs and all that. Then you have love, love needs, you know, relationship needs and all that. That's what you get. And uh, sorry, I think my light just turned off anyway, but after you get your love needs and esteem needs, you know, you get all the validation you need. Then you move to the next level, which will be finding your purpose, finding who you truly are, finding, you know, what your life is about. And because a lot of people ways, like they get in that community because, you know, they're lacking that love and really they don't have clarity on their life. They don't know who they are really. They don't know what they want. Um, and I, they're trying to find a way to fill that weight of low, that void of loneliness so they go out and meet women for that. But once you've got this handled, okay, now you want to move to the next step, find clarity about your life, find your purpose, and really move towards having contribution to the world, having a personal life mission. For me, it's my business. For me, it's that YouTube channel. So find that thing, find that thing that fulfills you. So in conclusion, do I game? Do I still game? Do I still go out? Yes, I still go out. Uh, I still go out with my friends and all that. And uh, I help them to get laid. I help them to, you know, meet more girls and all that. Sometimes I leave an approach with them with the intention, of course, not to sleep with the girl, but you know, to, you know, to uh, wing my friend, quote unquote. So yes, I still do that. Um, not as much uh, anymore as before, of course. Um, do I still do P POV festival videos? Yes, I, I will still do them, but they'll be a little different. Uh, more videos with my girlfriend, of course, a lot more. If you're in the POA community, man, uh, don't despair. Uh, you know, if you love the POA community, if you fucking hated anything I said, Make sure to comment below. Tell me like, you know, tell me what you thought about this video. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And uh, by the way, I, <laughs> you know, like, honestly, uh, I wouldn't be here without POA. I wouldn't be here without that community. I wouldn't be where I am standing right now shooting that video. I would have never had the confidence to do such things. Speak on camera, develop my public speaking skills, confidence skills. And it's because of POA that I am where I am today. I would never learn about self-development without PUA and all that. So PUA has its place in my heart. And if you're in a community, it should have its place in your heart too. But just remember that there's always a stage above it. And what I like to say about anything that's self-development related, whether it be PUA or anything else, is that it's like Alcoholics Anonymous. Like <laughs> The point of joining Alcohol Alcoholics Anonymous is to leave that, is to leave Alcoholics Anonymous. So the point of joining PUA is that you don't need to learn anything about PUA ever again, and you can just live your fucking life. That's what I believe.
and you could say it's interesting but maybe you could gauge you could you know monitor and see um, the success of the community of the POA community with you know depending on how many people you know leave that community and live a better life you know a lot of guys who get into pickup do they do they live a better life are they able to quit that community or are they always stuck in that perpetual loop that is the question don't forget to leave your comments below let me let me know if you disagree or agree with me i'd love to hear it and uh, you know the reason why i make those videos is like i want to bring more clarity to your life i want to bring like i want you to know like okay like what certain aspects of life you know you need to address uh you know give give my honest perspective on some of those things maybe you lack clarity right now that's why you click on that video maybe you don't know if the poa thing is right for you or not and then if you want more clarity in your life how, and you need help with uh, finding your purpose and all that, then I want you to book a free consultation call with me. You can literally do that by clicking on the link below or I'll put a link right there for you to sign up. Make sure you watch the quick video, fill out the survey, and you can book a time with me where we'll talk. We'll really start working on, uh, you know, having more awareness on your life, your current situation and where you want to go. So don't forget to do that and we'll speak next time. Peace.